Hi, this is Rob Heppel from FuneralGurus.com, and today I'm with Gino Grodnik. Gene, welcome to FuneralGurus. Thank you. We're, uh, you. we're here at the New Jersey State uh, Convention and Expo, and it's a pretty good event, right? Yeah, yeah I think lots so. Of, lots of people here, and um, great, uh, great hosts. I've, they've given me some great hospitality. Now, Gene's with the uh, Pittsburgh Institute of Mortuary Science, yes. and I've uh, been there for quite some time. And uh, Gene, I was just one of the things that uh, people they come onto my website. Uh, a lot of students who are looking, or not even that they're students, they they're interested in getting into funeral service, and they have a lot of questions. And although I'm not in the uh, that captionment of, of really seeing them enter, you must see the new people all the time. So if you could just maybe. What, uh, what would be some things that uh, someone who's considering joining funeral service and they're getting ready to, to go to a mortuary science college, what should they be aware of and, uh, you know, for the next two or four years of, of their life? Well, I think one of the things they have to be aware of that the curriculum is very rigorous. It is. And it's a very broad curriculum. Uh, I think the general public probably thinks that uh, the funeral service programs have uh, nothing but embalming, and that's all we do. But the curriculum is very broad, including business courses, accounting, business law, marketing, management. Uh, then you can swing over to the actual funeral service courses of embalming, and funeral director, and restorative art. Then you have the legal courses, business law, funeral service law, risk management. We have a risk management course. And then the psych end. Here we have quite a few psychology courses, from general psych to counseling to social psychology to, you know, so it's a very broad curriculum. And quite frankly, a lot of students, um, they come with maybe a strength in the hard sciences like anatomy, but they've never had a clue about business. Mm -hmm. So there's a very wide range of students and strengths. Rarely do we have students that are just even across the board without any weak weak points, mm -hmm. you know, or weak backgrounds, you know. So it, it brings us a, a pretty big, broad gathering mm -hmm. of types of students. You know. So that's what I would say. They need to understand that it's not just embalming, but there's a very broad array of courses sure. involved in the curriculum. But still, it's something that they can get through by applying themselves. Oh, yes. Yeah. They would have to apply themselves. Sure. Yeah. And like, yeah. Unlike college, actually. <laughs> <laughs> We've all been to college, and, and my college days were as good as anybody else's, but I think they really need to apply themselves more so because we're so intense, and it's crammed into the core program is one year, and in one year at Pittsburgh, they're getting 60 semester credits. That's typically two years of college in a traditional college environment. Okay. Yes. Now, what are some of the trends that you've seen? Uh, uh, Pittsburgh Institute, you bo have both uh, on campus and online. Yes. So, from uh, maybe from an average age perspective, it's not just young people coming out of uh, community college. What 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 are your average ages? Uh, the average age on our campus is about 25 years old. Okay. I mean, we have them 18. And we also have them 50 on campus. But on our online program, there's an average age of 37 to 38 years old, and that has been consistent uh, for the first nine years we've been doing this. Wow. And those are obviously all those people are second career they people? Are. And they are. Wow. And not even all of those have worked at a funeral home. You know, but they have the majority of them, more so online than on campus. Mm -hmm. uh, they have worked at a funeral home, uh, but we have some, you know, people that are changing careers. We have clergy people. Sure. We've had three physicians really that have been uh, in, 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 uh, currently students. Um, funny thing, one of them now he's long gone. He's a graduate. He is an orthopedic surgeon, and his son went to mortuary school. So I asked him when he came on campus for his first view, or his first uh, visit, uh, why he was there. And he told me it was his exit strategy for medicine. Really? Yes. Yeah. His goal was to buy a funeral home so he and his son could work together. In oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Oh, that is cool. 
Now, and one other thing, Gene, that I'd like to ask, what about, um, you know, we, we just look around here and there's uh, a lot of, lot of ladies, a lot of females here in funeral service now and uh, wasn't always the case. So what do you see? Because you see that, you know, the new people coming in, what's kind of the mix there? Uh, the mix in Pittsburgh is about 55% females. Right. Really? So yes. females are actually more yes. popular? Yes. Yes. Or, yes. And they're really bringing some strengths to funeral service. And it's interesting because some of the employers that heretofore would never think about hiring a lady now are, are giving second thoughts to that old paradigm. And when they hire the woman, the typical feedback I get is, I should have done this 20 years earlier. But really? I was a blockhead. Rather than call them biased, we'll just call them blockheads. Sure. Okay. Good. <laughs> well, hey, Gene, this has been great. It's uh, been great to meet you. We're uh, we're connected on Facebook, and I've mentioned this a few times that uh, uh, you know here at the convention, it's the first time that I've got to meet face to face with a lot of people that I've connected yes. with online. And uh, so, keep up the great work. Thank and you. Uh, you are a guru. And Thank you. You're watching funeralgurus.com. Thanks, Robin. Great. Thanks a lot, Gene. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yes, uh, also talk.